Hello and welcome back. Now that we've completed all of our setup steps and deployed a simple alpha blog app to production, we're going to divert our attention from the front end for a bit, which you've worked on so far, to the back end of our application. So let me pull up the MVC diagram. There it is. We're going to work over here in the database and the model. Okay, now this is the persistence layer of your application. This is where all of the data of your application resides, okay, in the database. And the way your application communicates with the database is through the model, all right? So now I want you to think of this independently from a Rails application, but as a general database management system, okay? So a database is made up of tables which store information. You can think of tables as Excel spreadsheets. Now let's take a look at a table that I'm going to call an articles table. Here it is. Now our assumption is going to be that our application stores information about articles created and served by it in a table that looks like this. Okay, so you'll see column names here. These are called attributes. So you have title, description, user ID, etc. You have the table name, which is the articles table, and then you have rows of data, okay? This is the data of your application. So let's look at the first column here, ID. ID in Rails is automatically generated. You don't have to worry about this. Rails assigns this automatically. Then there's title. So our articles table will have an attribute called title. So each article will have a title. Similarly, each article will have a description. So article one has this description. Article two has this description. And then user ID basically references the user who created this article. So you have a way to link up multiple tables. And that's actually what makes a relational database, but we won't get into that right now. Right now, I just want you to think of this articles table. Now, what would we normally want to do with a table like this? What would we want to do? Usually, we want the ability to create an article, read an article, update an article, or delete an article, okay? So these four operations are known as CRUD for create, read, update, and delete. And you'll find this with virtually any database system, okay? Now you'll need a query interface or language to talk to your database, right, from your application. To perform these operations, the most common one is called SQL. That's called Structured Query Language. Now back to our table. So we want the ability to add articles, which means add rows to this table for create, read existing rows, that's the read, update a row, so let's say if I wanted to rename the second article to something else, that's the U, and D, delete a row, so if I wanted to get rid of a row from here. All right, so now back to Rails. Rails uses what's called the active record pattern to communicate with the database. So you don't have to write SQL code to communicate with it. You can simply write Ruby code, which gets translated to SQL queries, and then your application interacts with the database. And this is where the model comes in, right here. Your application interacts with its database through the models that you have in your application. So let's take a look at this in Rails terms. And if you want to follow along back to your IDE, make sure you are no longer in the alpha blog, okay? So move up one directory. To do that, I'll type in cd dot dot. So I'm out of the alpha blog. And remember, we have a test app that we had created. And we're going to use the test app right here for all of our experiments. So I'm going to cd into test underscore app. Okay, so what we're going to do now is use some Rails provided magic. Now we'll restrain ourselves from using this in our applications we build going forward, 
but for our initial display purposes, nothing beats this. So let's add all four of the C, R, U, D, CRUD actions, including an articles table and an article model to communicate with the table in one shot by typing in just one line to our application. So since we've been working with a blog, we'll just say the application is a blog and it deals with articles, okay? So each article will have a title and a description. Let me pull up the diagram again. Right here, a title and a description, and you want to have all four of the actions. So let's go ahead and build this. Back to our IDE, make sure you're in the test app and not in the alpha blog app. Type in Rails generate scaffold article with a caps A to signify that it's a model. And we're going to give it title of type string. So title colon string and then description of type text. Okay. Now we're using what's called a scaffold generator and this is some Rails magic for you. Hit enter. Now look at all that code got, that got generated for you from typing in just that one line, all right? So let's briefly take a look at what it did. It invoked active record and created a migration file. This migration file will create the table for you. Then it created an article model right here. It created some tests. It added a controller, so an articles controller and it added some routes by putting in this line, resources articles. What resources provides for you, we'll talk about later. But it did all of that after typing in just one line. Now, one thing we do have to do right now is we have to run our migration file to create the actual table. To do that, type in rake space db colon migrate. Hit enter. And there it is. It created the articles table. So now if I look at the test app directory under DB, notice how there's a schema.rb file. There's the articles table, it has title, description, and it has created at and updated at. These are two magical fields that are provided by Rails and they're the timestamps, okay? Now this is maintained by Rails, so we don't have to worry about that. It also created the development.sqlite file, which is your SQLite database for your application. And under migrate, there's the migration file that just ran when I typed in rake db migrate, okay? So that's the db. If you look at app, controllers, there is your articles controller. It added all of this code to your controller and we'll discuss what they are soon. It also added a model. So there it is, article.rb model. It doesn't have any code in it, but it is required to basically give our application ability to talk to the database. All right, so let's see what that actually did. So first thing I'm going to do is look at config routes.rb file. See this line, resources articles? It gave a lot of routes to our application. To see that, I'm going to type in rake space routes. Check it out. I have all of these that just got updated. Those last two, welcome home and welcome about, were things I created before. So it added an articles page, that's the index, that lists all articles. It added a new article page. Then the new article page will have a form that gets submitted and handled by the create action. And we're going to look at all of this. Look at all of these routes that got created. So what does this mean? Let's start our Rails server and we'll take a look. Rails s-b 0.0.0.0. Hit enter. Preview port 3000. Okay, this is still the welcome page. But if I type in slash articles, check it out, listing articles. 
and it gives me a link to create a new article. Okay, now if I hover over it, look at the bottom. It says it goes to slash articles slash new. And that's one of the routes that we saw. I'm going to pull up rake routes again over here. Give me a second. So I'm going to do rake routes space pipe space grep article so it pulls up all the articles links okay so notice this slash article slash new if i hover over it that's the link at the bottom so let me click on it i have a new article form where i can enter in title and i can enter in some description okay so it created a new article page and it is allowing me to create articles. So let me click on create. The article was successfully created and it displays the article. Look at this first article description. This is the description for a new article. This is amazing. So if I click on back, I'm back to my listing articles page. Now that first article is showing up here and Look at this. It gives me a show, a edit link, and a destroy link. I can add a new article. I can say second article. This is description for, a, for the second article. Create article. Article was successfully created. If I click back, there you go. I have the first article, second article. This is so much stuff. If I can even edit an article, if I click on edit, and then I can say second article or second, I'll just make it edited. Update, back, look at this, second is now edited. So I'm getting all of the create, read, update and delete actions. Let me test out delete. I can just click on destroy, are you sure? Okay, second article is gone. Now I only have the first article. So what is going on here? Okay, to find out, we have to look at our articles controller. So let me pull it up. It's right here. This is the route, the first route that shows up, define index. So when we did rake routes, see the first one, slash articles, define index. Right here, slash articles. So this is an index page of all of your articles. Okay, that's simple enough. And that path is articles path. Then we look at this new article. So in your Rails application, you would refer to this link as new underscore article underscore path. The URL route is slash article slash new. And we looked at that when we did new article. See slash article slash new. And then the action is articles controller new action. So right here, we have define new. So articles controller new action but this has a lot of code this looks like a form where is that being served it's being served if you remember since we have articles controller new action under views you would have an articles folder and this should have a new.html.erb right here there it is now this is rendering form at this point, don't try to understand this code, but what's important is to understand how the information is flowing. Okay, and the form it's rendering is right here. This is the form that is showing up. See, it has title, it has description, and then it allows you to submit. So right here, title, description, create article, which is the submit button. And then the submission of that is going to this link, if you look at it right here, post to slash articles and it goes to articles create action and where is that that's right here this is the create action so the submission of the form is handled over here then if you look at it it has slash articles then an id of the article and then an edit link so that's the articles edit action so if i go over here if i go to back and I click on edit, notice the link. It's slash articles slash the ID of the article slash edit. 
right here, slash articles, slash ID, slash edit. And then the edit is handled by the update action. Okay, so patch, update action. So where is that in our controller? If you scroll down, there it is, patch, define update. So the edit form, which is this, if I click on update article, that will be handled by the submission of that will be handled by the update action. And then we have another path, which is delete right here. It goes to slash articles slash ID. So if I go back and I hover over this destroy, notice how slash articles slash one, and it is destroy and we specify in the controller that this is a destroy method. So if you go scroll down, there is destroy. And if you look at the link for it, if you go to index right here, link to destroy article, and there is this method delete which specifies that this is a destroy action. Okay, now all that, I know a lot is going on here. We don't have to worry about it too much, but check out what Rails gave you with just that one line of code. You got all of that info, right? So that's a great start. And we've seen the outline of CRUD actions using the scaffold generator, all right? And we're going to dissect this and learn more about Rails migrations and how to build these from scratch so we have the ability to bend the code, okay? But for that, instead of having code like this, where you have a lot of clutter that just got generated. And to be honest, it's a little difficult to understand at first, but if you build it, right? If you build it from scratch, you'll know where and what to change to bend the code the way that you want. Okay, great. But before we do that, okay? Before we learn how to do that, it's better if you have a basic understanding of SQL queries, okay? so you know what they do. If you already have a basic understanding, you can skip this lesson, but if you don't, then go to this link. It's called W3Schools, again. And over here, if you scroll down, you'll see Learn SQL. If you click on that, now this is a SQL tutorial. It is very easy, interactive, and it walks you through the basics. Now you don't have to go through the entire thing because there's a lot of things here that we don't really need, but just get started. Super easy and simple to understand and just get an understanding of how SQL works. And you also get an idea of SQL and how databases work independent of Rails by doing this. All right, perfect. Now starting in the next section, we'll work on Rails versions of these actions and interacting with the database, including the Rails console, which is one of the most powerful tools you'll use while developing in Rails and a lot of other fun things. So with that, we wrap up section three and I'll see you in the next section.